Hello, I'm Nathan Robinson, the editor of Current Affairs magazine, and today I'm going to be reading to you my article, Democrats, you really do not want to nominate Joe Biden. If you're a Democrat, you may be thinking about the presidential primary something like this. Joe Biden doesn't seem like a bad guy. He was a good vice president under Obama, and he's certainly better than the monster we have in the White House right now. Biden may not be our perfect candidate, but who is? I agree with Bernie on a lot of things, but he wants to shake up the whole party and push a radical agenda that Americans aren't ready for. Biden is clearly the safe bet. And it's time to get serious about beating Donald Trump. So if that captures your thinking, I would like you to now give me a chance to show that this argument for Biden, which is very common and very tempting, is ultimately wrong in a very dangerous way. What if we were just picking the person we thought would make the best president? Who can we trust with power? Who is honest and principled? Let's compare the candidates on these grounds first, and then I will discuss the ramifications for the electability issue. I'll show why the answer to the question, who would make the best president, affects the answer to who would make the best candidate. First, let's look at two of the most important issues a president will have influence on and needs to be trusted to handle well war, and the social safety net. Uh, Biden has reacted angrily to Bernie Sanders' suggestion that Biden try to cut Social Security, accusing Sanders of engaging in, quote, dishonest smears. But Biden is lying when he says he never tried to cut Social Security benefits for the elderly. You can even watch him brag about it. Biden has proposed raising the retirement age and eliminating cost of living increases, and has said of Medicare and Social Security that you've got to put all of it on the table. Ryan Grimm and Lee Fong unearthed material from the 1990s proving that senior advocacy groups had blasted Biden for siding with the GOP, with an AARP representative saying, saying Biden was endorsing, quote, nothing more than a raid on Social Security's trust fund. Okay, so then there's Iraq. In 2003, Biden was a senator bullish about the push to war in Iraq, who helped sell the Bush administration's pitch to the American public, who voted for and helped advance the Bush agenda. He was the war's most crucial Senate supporter. Biden repeated the myth that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction, saying that, quote, these weapons must be dislodged from Saddam Hussein or Saddam Hussein must be dislodged from power. I never believed they had weapons of mass destruction, he said in October 2004, even though he had told the American people the exact opposite. In this campaign, Biden has been saying things like, quote, President George W. Bush got them in, and before we knew it, we had shock and awe immediately. The moment it started, I came out against the war at that moment. Now, Biden had to admit to fact checkers that this was in fact false. He has explained his conduct by saying he wrongly placed his trust in George W. Bush to use his authority carefully. But The Intercept has reported that as early as 1998, Biden was saying things like, quote, the only way we're going to get rid of Saddam Hussein is we're going to end up having to start it alone. Now, I don't need to remind you that many people die or go broke because they can't afford treatment. Uh, but as policy analyst Matt Brunig has noted, not only will Biden's proposal, uh, to the extent one can even understand its confusing provisions, uh, cause enormous amounts of insurance churn and instability, further immiserating people when they face hardships like loss of job, loss of spouse, loss of Medicaid due to income increase, and every other negative life event, but it does not even an aim to provide universal insurance coverage. As Brunig notes, this could lead to well over 100,000 unnecessary deaths per year. Real people who will die because Biden wants to protect the industry that profits off those deaths. Consider his relationship with the finance sector, which invested millions in him. As good government advocate Zephyr Teachout has written, middle class Joe has perfected the art of taking big contributions, then representing his corporate donors at the cost of middle and working class Americans. Teachout notes, 
While bankrolled by the credit card industry, Biden delivered for it by spearheading a bankruptcy bill that made it harder for Americans to reduce their debts and helped cause the financial crisis. The Consumer Federation of America said he provided a veneer of bipartisanship to stripping bankruptcy protections that eventually helped the credit card companies win over other Democrats. The New York Times reported that during the years Biden was helping the credit card industry, his son had a consulting agreement that lasted five years, with one of the largest companies pushing for the changes. That's Hunter Biden, who we'll meet again later. Since 1974, when Biden gave the rather shocking quote that he didn't think a woman had the sole right to say what happened to her body, Biden's record on women's issues has been deeply disappointing. In the 1980s, he voted to let states overturn Roe v. Wade, which the National Abortion Rights Action League said was the most devastating attack yet on abortion rights. In 2006, Biden described himself as an odd man out among Democrats on abortion because he held a more conservative position than Planned Parenthood and the National Organization for Women. In 2019, he was still saying that he supported the Hyde Amendment banning federal funding of abortions. Now, finally, Biden did succumb to pressure and reversed his position during the campaign, having had to be forced by decades of activism. Eight women have accused Biden of inappropriately touching them, and in response, Biden has literally said he is, quote, not sorry for anything I've ever done. I feel Joe Biden put his hands on my shoulders, get up very close to me from behind, lean in, smell my hair, and then plant a slow kiss on the top of my head. He just, like, slid his hands behind my neck and pulled me close and then he rubbed noses with me um, for like 10 seconds, 15 seconds. He was saying something to me, I don't remember what. The quote, freest country in the world has the most people locked up per capita. It's 2.2 million total. Biden contributed significantly to that problem. He was one of the key congressional figures in refashioning the Democratic Party as a tough on crime party. Biden collaborated with unrepentant segregationist Strom Thurmond to create the Biden Thurmond Crime Bill, which restricted use of the insanity defense, shifting the burden of proof from the prosecutor to the defendant, and abolished parole. Biden collaborated with the hard right to expand the death penalty, boasting that, quote, the liberal wing of the Democratic Party is now for 60 new death penalties. And indeed, people did get sentenced to death because of the law that Biden himself wrote. Biden promoted measures that created more heavily armed police forces, increasingly focused on locking up people for minor drug crimes. And citing ecstasy use, he called for stiff criminal penalties for anyone who had a rave, demanding rave venues be bulldozed and proprietors be put in jail. Arrest the promoter. Find a rationale unrelated to drugs. Biden voted for the infamous Patriot Act. Not only that, he called it, quote, measured and prudent. In fact, he would have liked to go further, regretting that measures handing police more extreme powers had been removed. He even bragged that the Patriot Act was based on a bill he himself wrote long before 9-11, but hadn't been able to get through thanks to the opposition of civil liberties groups back then. Biden says John Ashcroft told him of the Patriot Act, Joe, I'm introducing the act basically as you wrote it in 1994. The Obama administration deported hundreds of thousands of immigrants, more than any other administration, a process that tore countless families apart and has served as Donald Trump's go-to rationalization for his own brutal immigration policies. Now, Biden has sometimes simply lied about this and pretended it didn't happen. The Obama administration actually misled the public about what it was doing, and reports concluded that contrary to Obama's avowed policy, a huge part of ICE's enforcement efforts resulted in the separation of families, and a much smaller portion went toward deporting people who posed legitimate public safety threats. Biden's campaign is stuffed with fossil fuel executives. His climate advisor is a former board member of a natural gas company uh, called Chenier Energy. One of his fundraisers co-founded natural gas company Western LNG. The pro-Biden super PAC has a former gas lobbyist on its board, and his national campaign co-chair, Cedric Richmond, has one of the most pro-industry voting records on fossil fuel issues among all congressional Democrats.
Biden had to leave his first presidential race in disgrace because he was caught copying his speeches directly from a British Labour leader. That scandal was compounded by a lie that he'd finished in the top half of his law school class when he'd finished near the bottom, and his having plagiarized his academic work. He told audiences he participated in sit-ins to desegregate movie theaters when he did no such thing. He did this over and over, as Sean King documented in actually King's report, is devastating. Biden said he was arrested in South Africa on his way to see Nelson Mandela, which also wasn't true. The South Africa lie was recent, meaning that Biden's still doing exactly the sort of thing that he was forced to drop out in 1988 over. And Joe Biden frequently contrasts himself with Sanders by emphasizing his pride in his party affiliation. But in fact, perhaps no Democratic politician has done more to cozy up to and help Republicans and excuse their wrongdoing. Indeed, he voted for the Reagan budget that saw scores of federal programs for health, education, and social services drastically cut back, weakened, or outright eliminated. As Norman Solomon notes, Biden spouted white backlash rhetoric, used tropes pandering to racism, and teamed up with arch segregationists against measures like busing for school integration. He sanitized the legacy of his white supremacist friends, portraying them as good people who had atoned when they clearly hadn't. They just morphed from open racists to advocates of tough-on-crime policies and states' rights. Biden maintains this delusional notion that if he was elected president, Republicans will stop their intransigent opposition to liberal social reforms. He doesn't understand how deep the ideological differences are. First of all, I actually like Dick Cheney, for real. And he's incapable of fighting Republicans on key issues. He even considered picking one as his vice president. Biden has been controversial for his handling of the hearings in which Anita Hill accused Thomas of sexual harassment. Biden was criticized for his decision to allow aggressive questioning of Hill by a panel exclusively comprising white men. Determine what your motivation might be. Are you a scorned woman? Do you have a militant attitude relative to the area of civil rights? Do you have a martyr complex? The issue of fantasy has arisen. Years later, when Biden finally gave Hill a kind of pitiful semi-apology, it led her deeply unsatisfied. Biden also says that he believed Hill from the beginning. Women should be believed. I believed Anita Hill. But his fellow Senator Arlen Specter said Biden told him privately that Biden thought she was lying. Now, Biden himself in 2008 conceded that I may not be what the party's looking for. I may be too muscular on foreign policy. I may not be pure enough about abortion rights. I may not have been energetic enough about gay marriage. Uh, by muscular, he means he helped initiate a disastrous endless war. Uh, by pure, he means he was actively fighting against women's rights groups over federal funding of abortion. And by energetic, he means that he voted for the Homophobic Defense of Marriage Act. On every single issue I have discussed, Bernie Sanders is just better than Joe Biden. He voted against the horrific war that Joe Biden helped cause because Sanders knew it would be a catastrophe. Sanders fought to protect Social Security as Joe Biden was trying to cut it. Sanders' health care plan covers every single person so that hundreds of thousands of people don't die from uninsurance. Sanders has never made up a fictitious history of civil rights activism. He doesn't need to because he has a real history of civil rights activism. Go through the past 40 years of American political history on almost every issue you'll see. Joe Biden on the wrong side, Bernie Sanders on the right one. When Biden was saying that a woman shouldn't have the sole right to determine what to do with their body, Bernie Sanders was literally calling out politicians for telling women what to do with their bodies. When Joe Biden was voting for the Defense of Marriage Act, Sanders was sticking it to Republicans who dared to question the loyalty of gay soldiers. Now my ears may have playing, been playing a trick on me, but I thought I heard the gentleman a moment ago say something quote unquote about homos in the military. Was I right in hearing that expression? Absolutely putting homosexuals in the military. You said something about homos in the military. Was the gentleman referring to the many thousands and thousands of gay people who have put their lives on the line in countless wars defending this country? I'm was talking... that the group of people that the gentleman was referring to? You use the word homos in the military. You have insulted thousands of men and women who have put their lives I'm on the line. About... The president needs to have good judgment, and this is what good judgment looks like. It's true that a lot of people in Washington 
don't like Bernie Sanders, although it's actually a myth that this has kept him from being an effective politician. In fact, for an independent uh, whose positions are strongly opposed by party leadership, he's been an impressively effective legislator at getting things done. He might not get everything done that he proposes. He might may have to change or soften some initiatives, but he would clearly fight for things that are worth fighting for. Okay, you say. I admit that Joe Biden has a history of showing egregiously poor judgment on nearly every political issue I care about, fabricating his biography to make himself look good, defending the worst Republicans, and actively doing harm to progressive causes. But I still think Biden is the best candidate to run against Trump. Now to me, this seems a little counterintuitive. You're better off running the person you think makes the best potential president because it will be easier to make the case that they are the best potential president. Biden's built his central case against Trump around their supposed contrasting characters. Character is on the ballot. Joe Biden's record is so bad, he's unable to effectively attack Trump on the areas where Trump is most vulnerable. It's harder to run someone who lied about doing sit-ins than someone who actually sat in. That's all gonna be put in ads that are run against Biden, and Trump has hundreds of millions of dollars to blast those ads far and wide. They're gonna be effective, because they'll be correct. Brace yourself. Because in a general election, you're going to hear about all of this all the goddamn time. Trump's specialty is brutal attacks on DC politicians, which he does with a knack for entertainment that those who come out of the Senate instead of television can hardly hope to match. Welcome to the world, Joe. You having a good time, Joe? Are you having a good time? I want to see Hunter ask these questions. Hunter, you know nothing about energy. You know nothing about China. You know nothing about anything, frankly. Hunter, you're a loser. Why did you get $1.5 billion, Hunter? Trump packs stadiums and is bringing in campaign cash in the hundreds of millions. Even though Biden has ultimately been able to consolidate centrist voters behind him, his fundraising has been anemic, his events poorly attended, and his on-the-ground campaign apparatus bare bones. <laughs> Even Barack Obama was reportedly nervous about running him in the primary. The gaffes, which have always been a Biden trait, have become near constant. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the Go, you know the, you know the thing. This may well be why his advisors had to keep him from doing too many public events, preferring quiet, private fundraisers to rallies and town halls. Now this should be a giant red flag. Trump has already begun to bring up Biden's mental health, noting that Biden said 150 million people were killed with guns. 150 million people have been killed since 2007 when Bernie voted to exempt the gun manufacturers. Trump will compile all of the flubs. He'll go through them in excruciating detail at his rallies, and he'll talk about how sad it is to see someone in such obvious decline. Yes, you may say, I admit Joe Biden is a disaster waiting to happen, but Bernie Sanders is a democratic socialist. I think this concern is actually kind of backwards, and that a populist outsider like Bernie Sanders will have a much easier time running against Trump than Democratic insider politicians. In fact, uh, Trump himself was afraid Hillary Clinton would pick Bernie Sanders as her running mate uh, because he guessed that she would have won with Sanders on the ticket. So here's my fear. A narrative right now is going to take hold that Bernie Sanders is on the outs, Joe Biden is rising from the ashes. And this race is still technically close, but Biden has this momentum and they're gonna say Bernie's revolution didn't happen. Everyone go home, it's time to get serious and pick Joe. I mean, yes, if we don't talk about his long history of involvement with all the worst policy blunders of the last 40 years, or the way he makes women uncomfortable, or his long history of outrageous lies about himself, or his inability to organize a campaign rally, or even complete a sentence half the time, or his total lack of answer to the question, how will Biden get Bernie's supporters, especially young people, to turn out for him? If we just bury all of that, then yes, we can make Biden seem like a reasonable choice. But those things don't go away. They're coming back and they are going to hit Biden like a freight train the moment he faces Donald Trump. And as Biden did in 1988, and as he did in 2008, and as he did in Iowa, and as he did in New Hampshire, he will likely crumple. But we don't have to do this. We have a window. 
albeit a small one, to turn this around. We can have a campaign and a presidency in which we can truly take pride. It's Biden, not Sanders, who would be the risky bet. A Sanders presidency is nothing to fear. But a Biden nomination certainly is.